Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm a digital artist based in New Jersey. The first step I'm going to ask you to do is find an animal image that you want to use. Make sure your image has a nice silhouette like my example on the screen. Copy the image and let's get started with Photoshop. At the top of the interface, we have the menus. To the left, we have the tools. Depending on which tool we have selected, the options bar beneath the menus will change. For example, right now I have the brush selected, so the options are related to the brush. On the right side, we have other panels open by default. The only panel I'm going to be talking about today is the bottommost one, the layers panel. Layers are a crucial part of Photoshop, which I will talk more about later. To delete the other panels, click and drag the tab to make it float, and then click the X in the upper right corner. First thing that we have to do is create a new document. You have to click the File menu, then New. The shortcut is Control n on your keyboard. Shortcuts are very useful and save time, so I will be mentioning them a lot. For simplicity, I am going to change my document type to US Paper. The presets change to a width of 8.5 inches and a height of 11 inches. The settings can all be changed if you have a different size in mind. Next to the number, you can click the drop down to change the measurement. I'm going to leave mine at inches. Resolution is very important. Anything that is going to be printed needs to be a minimum of 300 pixels per inch. Again, this can be changed if you use a different unit of measurement. I'm going to leave my color mode alone. Make sure your background color is set to white and click OK. You'll notice that once you create the new document, in the layers panel there will be a locked background layer that acts as a white canvas. Press Ctrl V on your keyboard to paste the image that you've copied. The image may not paste the first time, so copy and paste it again. Once you paste your image, you'll notice that a new layer was created in your layers panel. Think of layers as tracing paper. Each new layer you create will be transparent. To scale the image, hit Ctrl T on your keyboard. This brings up the free transform tool. It could also be found under my edit menu. Most actions will have the shortcut listed next to them. You can also customize the shortcuts. To scale proportionately, you hold shift on your keyboard, but since I want to scale proportionately from the center, I'm going to hold shift and alt while clicking and dragging one of the corner squares. If you look at the options bar, it changed to become free transform options. The check symbol at the end will accept the transformation. You can also double click with your mouse or hit enter on your keyboard. To decline the transformation if you messed up, click the circle with the line going through it or hit escape. If you are making your image bigger, it will appear pixelated at first, but once you accept the transformation, it will become smoothed out. You should rename your layers to stay organized. To rename a layer, double click on the layer name, in this case, layer one, and type a new name. I'm going to call it image, then hit enter. It is important that you double click on the name and not on the layer because double clicking on the layer brings up the layer styles. If your image is too dark, you can change its opacity in the upper right corner of the layer panel. Next, we need to create a new layer. At the bottom of your layers panel, there are a bunch of icons. Click on the one that looks like a post-it note to create a new layer. If you hover over any of the icons in Photoshop, a tooltip will appear telling you what it does. Again, you'll notice that in the preview, the layer is checkered, meaning that it is transparent. I'm going to name this new layer, Line Layer. There's a few things that we're going to need to set up before we can begin our project. Because we are going to be using our brush to dictate the stroke of the pen tool, we need to check its options. First, make sure your foreground color is set to black. If you hit D on your keyboard, this will guarantee that your foreground color is set to black and that your background color is set to white. D is for default. We can always change the color of our stroke later on. On the options bar, we can change the size of our brush. You can also change the size with the left and right brackets on your keyboard. The size I'm using is 20 pixels. The hardness of the brush should be set to 100%. You should be using a round hard brush. The opacity and flow should be set to 100%. Now we can start using the pen tool, which is also P on your keyboard. We are going to start by creating the silhouette. For this project, we are putting down anchor points, so all you have to do is click where you want to point. This should be sequential, like connecting the dots, all around your image. You may need to exaggerate some of the points so that they aren't too close together. If you have points that are too close together, this will create tiny shapes later on that we don't want. 
If you decide you want to move a point, hold control and click the point you want to move. Holding control brings up the direct selection tool, which will look like a white arrow. When you are about to close your shape, a little circle will appear next to your pen tool. This means that your path is complete and that you've created an enclosed shape. Now I can stroke my path by right clicking and selecting stroke path. Make sure you are selected on your line layer. Click on the drop down to change pencil to brush. This is why we changed our brush settings earlier. Simulate pressure should be turned off, then click OK. Yay, we have our outline. To make things easy, I'm going to delete the path by hitting delete on the keyboard. Next, I'm going to outline the anatomy like it's head and legs. Each time that I'm happy with the path that I've made, I'm going to right click, stroke path, then delete the path. At this point, we can turn off the visibility of our image layer by clicking on the eyeball next to it. Now we can see what we have so far. I'm going to erase a little bit from his tail using the eraser tool or E on your keyboard. Once you are happy with the lines, we can start breaking down the animal into smaller shapes. I like the way that triangles and quadrangles look, but it's up to personal preference. Experiment with the way things look and see what you like. It's easiest to start with the smaller closed shapes first. I started with the legs, then the eye and head, and finally the body. Because this is all repetition, I'm just going to quickly speed through this. I accidentally hit delete too many times and deleted the layer. To undo, hit Ctrl Alt Z on your keyboard. Ctrl Alt Z goes backward and Ctrl Shift Z steps forward. These commands can be found under the edit menu. Yay, now that we're done, we can get to the fun part, coloring. Start by creating a new layer. I'm going to call this one green one, but you can call it whichever color you are using. I'm going to be referring to this layer as color one. If you look at the tools, you'll notice that at the bottom right corner of each icon, there's an arrow. If you right click on any of these icons, it brings up other tools. The shortcut is shift plus the tools shortcut. In this case, we are looking for the paint bucket tool. So shift G would be the shortcut since it's under the gradient tool. If you hold Alt while using the Paint Bucket tool, the Eyedropper tool will appear. Simply click on the area that you want to pick from. If you don't like the chosen color, you can click on the foreground color on the left side or the color panel if you have it open on the right and manually change it. The box in the middle contains the different values while the bar on the right controls the hue. Once again, I'm going to turn off my image. The tool we are going to be using for selection is the Magic Wand tool. It can be found under the Quick Selection tool or Shift W. With the line layer selected, we are going to be selecting inside our enclosed lines. If you hold shift, notice a plus sign appears next to your cursor. This allows you to make multiple selections. If you hold alt, you'll see a subtraction sign indicating that you can take away from a selection. Once you're done selecting, you click back on the color one layer. Click the paint bucket tool and fill the chosen color inside the selected area. If the right layer is selected and there are multiple selections, the shapes will fill in at the same time. If only one shape fills, you are on the wrong layer. To get rid of your selection or deselect, press Ctrl D on your keyboard. The next step is to create a new layer. We will call this layer color two. Click on the line layer to make your selections. I'm going to speed up the video while I repeat the process. The steps include, activate the magic wand tool, make selections, once finished, choose a new color, 
click on Paint Bucket, select Color to Layer, and fill in the selection. Then deselect the selection with Control D. Here are some tips. If you want to remove one of the shapes to change the color, use the magic wand tool to select the shape on the color layer and hit delete. Then select the right color layer, use the eyedropper by holding alt and picking the right color, then use the paint bucket to fill it. If you want to change an entire layer's color, select the layer, then press Ctrl U which brings up the hue saturation box. Click on the checkbox next to where it says colorize. We have the hue slider which determines the color the saturation slider, which controls the dullness or brightness of the color, and the lightness slider, which controls the lightness or the darkness of the color. Play around with the sliders to create different colors for your project. So that's the end. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If I miss something and you're stuck and have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below. You can also give me suggestions for future videos. If you would like to see more tutorials, subscribe to my channel. Also, if you created a project using my video, I would love to see the finished result. Follow me on Instagram at sketchwithsteps and tag me. I hope you had fun creating with me. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll be posting new tutorials every Sunday.